from. Welcome everyone. We are having ourselves a vigil here today, a picket line, a press conference outside of the Federal Building in Chicago. Uh, we're gathered here today because on tomorrow, the United Nations will be voting once again about the United States blockade of Cuba. For the last several years, the United Nations has voted to condemn the United States and call on them to end the blockade of Cuba. They're going to vote again tomorrow. Every year, the results are the same. The entire world community is in opposition to the United States economic sanctions and blockade of Cuba. So we gather today to say Cuba si, Vaqueo no. Cuba si, Vaqueo no. Cuba si, Vaqueo no. Cuba si, Vaqueo no. Our uh, next speaker is, is um, Danica Kedovich. Uh, she's co-director of Code Pink. Uh, she's based here in Chicago, and we're proud to have her here today. As Code Pink has proved yesterday, they're one of the thorough conscience of the United States. So, Danica. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for having me. I actually got the privilege of also traveling to Cuba uh, in 2022 to learn about the impacts of the U.S. blockade. And a justification that I hear over and over again uh, from political elites in the United States uh, is that the blockade is imposed because Cuba isn't a, a democracy. They don't have democracy in Cuba. But when, when I was in Cuba, something interesting happened. I was sitting at dinner with my Cuban hosts when I found out that Roe versus Wade was being overturned in the United States. While I was in a country that not only gives people the right to an abortion, but a free abortion on demand whenever they need it. Woo! Yes. Woo! So in, in the US, a handful of people that I didn't elect, that were appointed by a president I did not have the right to vote for because of my age, threw out my right to an abortion because they could. Because our democracy doesn't require our consent to revoke our rights, and our political system doesn't ask what we want or consult us in our own futures. So our leaders do not actually care, they're not actually concerned about democracy here or in Cuba. The explicit intent of the blockade is to crush the Cuban economic and political system. Leaked, official, U.S. documents have proved that to be true. There's no more denying the fact that after 60 years it hasn't worked. So the U.S. doubles down and places Cuba on the state sponsor of terrorism list, and the result is more human suffering. Cubans deserve the right to chart their own course, to build their own future, and to decide their own political and economic structures. And it has been disgusting to watch local, state, and national leaders roll their eyes at the migrant crisis in the city of Chicago when they haven't done a single thing to call out the sanctions that are causing so many people to leave Latin America in the first place. The United Nations votes overwhelmingly against the blockade of Cuba every single year. The world does not support economic warfare on the people of Cuba. While the blockade hasn't been successful in its explicit goals to overthrow the Cuban government, it makes life in Cuba very difficult. Any leader pretending to care about the Cuban people that also supports the economic policy that causes their suffering is lying to protect their own political ideology. The people of Cuba are the ones suffering under this blockade due to a lack of medicine, fuel, food, and more coming into the country, and it's mighty convenient for American politicians to implement a suffocating blockade that stops necessary goods from coming into the country and then blame that deficit of goods on socialism. The point of the blockade is cruelty, and any U.S. president for, uh, has no right to talk about democracy or sovereignty or freedom or human rights as long as they support the blockade on Cuba. Code Pink calls for the immediate lifting of the blockade and a removal of Cuba from the state sponsor of terrorism list. Thank you. Let Cuba live. 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 Woo!